Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are tracking Tropical Storm Debbie after making landfall this morning as a hurricane, as well as another tropical wave, now disturbance one, moving through the Caribbean and potentially being our next Gulf hurricane. And if you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Monday, August 5th, 2024. The black arrows pointing towards Tropical Storm Debbie was a hurricane this morning before making landfall with the Big Bend area of Florida. And then we also have Disturbance 1 in purple in the Eastern Caribbean. And then we have two tropical waves in the main development region by pink and blue. Pink one uh, being swallowed up by some Saharan dust, so we don't see a lot of convection with it at the moment. Here's the spin and vorticity of our tropical entities. The most intense one obviously being Debbie. We also have two in the Pacific. Uh, actually, four storms altogether in the Pacific. They're already up to their F name storm, so they ratcheted up their activity after being the slowest start ever in the Pacific. Uh, but the Atlantic is uh, on its way to ramping up as well. So we have Debbie. We could be seeing Ernesto soon. And we, set, we have those two tropical waves out there, which the European model is supportive of developing. GFS, not so much. Here's the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Debbie as it continues moving in a northeast direction very slowly across uh, northern Florida, heading towards Georgia and potentially back out into the Atlantic. As you can see here on the spaghetti track guidance models, National Hurricane Forecast, and you can see it's got a very wide cone of uncertainty because as it slows down, the steering patterns are going to be very uh, off. So it has a wide range of possibilities of where this could end up over the next five to seven days. As you can see here on the spaghetti track plot as well. So in terms of intensity, uh, right now it is a tropical storm. It's, it's going to weaken while it's over land and then... If it stays over land, the models that are showing that will show it dipping down to tropical depression status. If it is able to re-emerge back over the water, it will maintain tropical storm force, maybe even re-strengthen back to a hurricane before making a secondary landfall either in Georgia or South Carolina or North Carolina. But as it sits in circles over this region, it's going to dump a ton of rain, as you can see on the National Hurricane Center's forecast map here. Upwards of two feet is possible in and around Savannah to Charleston, depending on where this wants to wobble around. So flash flooding is definitely going to be a problem. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding Debbie. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause to take a chance to read that. And then in terms of storm surge, we could see upwards of two to four feet from the Florida Georgia border all the way up to Cape Fear North Carolina and that's going to pro compound the problem with the flooding rain because the rivers are going to want to bring all that rain that's to being dumped on the inland parts of North Carolina Georgia and South Carolina and bring it back to the ocean but the ocean's going to try and surge in so you're going to have even more flooding with those two fighting it against each other. Now here's the latest satellite image of Disturbance 1 as it's entering the Eastern Caribbean. Not much uh, discussed right now with this in terms of what it looks like. Uh, it's very unorganized. It's got a 10% chance of developing over the next two days and a 30% chance over the next seven days. And its best possibility of developing is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico and I'll show you why. So here's the GFS model. The purple hexagon will be the Sturbins 1. Black is Debbie and then our two tropical waves in pink and blue. The purple Sturbins 1 is on the southern end of an upper level ridge. So it's creating a low wind shear environment at the moment. But you can see the Caribbean is highly wind sheared. So that's going to cause a lot of that dry air to potentially infiltrate our tropical wave as it moves through the Caribbean. So because of that, we have a lack of development over the next two days on the model. So this is Wednesday, August 7th. D wind shear starts to decrease, and we see it start to cluster together as it works its way towards the Yucatan Peninsula, 
on Saturday, October 10th, which is five days from now. You can see in black, Debbie still circling around the interior section of South Carolina on this model run. Now we're going to have a new upper level ridge starting to develop, but a lot of wind shear will still be on the eastern side of this tropical wave, as you can see here, but its moisture bubble will still be intact, at least on this model run. And the more intact this storm can be, the better organized getting into the Gulf of Mexico, the stronger this storm potentially could get. Now, right now it's looking to be a, like a deja vu of Debbie, but instead of the Eastern Gulf, we're talking about the Western Gulf of Mexico. So this is a week from now on Monday, August 12th. GFS is showing a tight vorticity signature in the Western Gulf of Mexico, heading in a Northwest direction, 1,003 millibar low pressure system. And then a very, sh right underneath an upper level ridge, which we know with Debbie, and with Beryl, when you have that combination with the very warm sea surface temperatures of the Gulf of Mexico, low wind shear environment, a lot of moisture, potentially could see another hurricane develop. How strong it could be, that's still too far out to tell, but this is one possibility that could occur. Yesterday we showed you one going towards the eastern Gulf of Mexico in the wake of Debbie, towards the Big Bend. Now today it's saying it could be near the Houston area. Still a lot of uncertainty, so don't hold this as a green assault. This is just another possibility that what could happen. European model is saying this storm potentially could even cross Central America and go into the Pacific, where it won't be developing there. Uh, but it's supportive of two of those tropical waves in pink and blue in the main development region of potentially developing. As you can see here on the ensemble models, the left is the European Ensemble, the right is the GFS Ensemble. And we can see that it's bullish of the two tropical waves behind Disturbance 1 on the European. GFS is bullish on Disturbance 1 developing, once especially getting into the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll keep an eye on all of this along with where and how long Debbie's going to be dumping rain on the eastern coast of the United States. As you can see, we'll continue to track Debbie. We'll track Disturbance 1 and its potential for developing in the Gulf of Mexico, maybe into a hurricane. And we'll track our other two tropical waves because eventually the favorability in the Pacific will reach its way to the Atlantic and we could see an explosion of storms like we are seeing in the Pacific right now where they have four tropical storms. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.